Okay. Good morning. Hello. <laughs> you are the moderator or I'm the moderator? Uh, you are the moderator if you want. Moderator. Well, good morning, everyone. <laughs> I'm the self-appointed moderator of this uh, session. <laughs> uh, I know Javier for uh, over 30 years. We were in uh, university, I think. And since then, we both, uh, one way or another, became uh, entrepreneurs. And uh, it's great to uh, see him again and uh, his success. And I think we have, we've been given three points to talk about today. Uh, the first one is the rise of sustainability. And I think on that one, uh, we're supposed to explain a little bit what we're doing and the uh, progress of our company. So we let Javier start his company, EcoAlf. Uh, he's doing amazing, uh, he's doing an amazing job. And he re I remember when he told me when we were together trying to raise funds and look for investors and, and start uh, our companies, I think around 12 years ago, yeah, 14 more. years ago, um, how he wanted to get the plastic from the sea and make it into fabric. But what, what happened since then, Javier? Bueno, thank you. Alejandro is a good friend. It takes us back a long time, I remember. No? I think it was 2009, 2010. No? Yep. We were in London, both of us with our ideas. I wanted to create a sustainable fashion company. Alejandro wanted to revolutionize Formula One. And uh, we were both looking for investors. No? That was yeah, 13, 14 years ago. No? So since then, yeah, finally, I think both of us, we did it. <laughs> we're here. <laughs> we're in. And, and yeah, at that point, I wanted to create um, a sustainable fashion company. I believe the most sustainable thing to do was not to keep on using natural resources. So recycling could be a solution. No? If we're able to make like, this new generation of recycled products with the same quality and design as the best non-recycled. The problem is that when I went to the market in 2010, there were no cool recycled fabrics. So um, we had to start developing those fabrics. No? Luckily, I fed, found this amazing woman uh, south of Taichung, which was recycling uh, plastic bottles to create carpets. And she had a lot of sensibility. No? And since then, I think we have developed more than 600 different recycled fabrics from all types of different weights, no? fishing nets, cotton, plastic bottles, um, wool, cashmere, used ties, etc. No? Bueno, tell us about, about a bit backstory, no? about how you started with Formula E, where you're now, what are your challenges? Yes, and a uh, very similar story also to try to uh, come, into a, come into a space that is already uh, existing. Uh, and from within, try to make it sustainable. And I would love to say that the motivation for me was, you know, to save the planet and all these things that people say, uh, but it was not. <laughs> the motivation <laughs> for me was purely financial. It was uh, commercial, it was business. Of course, I worry, as a, everyone should worry, about climate change. And uh, I think uh, global warming is a scientific fact. Since, uh, since Arrhenius discovered the greenhouse effect, it's nonsense to deny that throwing CO2 into the atmosphere will end up uh, raising the temperature. But that was not the motivation. The motivation was that I was trying to bring a sponsor into Formula One. At the, at the time, I had a company that was doing uh, uh, brokering deals between sponsors and teams in Formula One. And when we were almost about to sign the contract, that sponsor said, we're not going to come into Formula One. We cannot because it's not sustainable. It uses fossil fuels. Uh, it has emissions. We need to look for something like sailing or like cycling or like... And at that point, I thought, we have a problem. Motorsports has a problem. We need to look for a, for a green way to create it. And that was really the origin of Formula E, of the idea of Formula E. The point is, if there is no business plan, if there is no business case, sustainability doesn't work. I mean, you have a company making clothes that is sustainable. But if you don't sell it to people, if people don't pay for it, and your company doesn't make a profit, you're going to go bankrupt, and the company that is not sustainable is going to prevail. Absolutely. So one thing is very clear for me. People are not angels that suddenly are going to become sustainable and uh, be called at night in their homes and don't use a code because they want to use less. No. Everything needs to have a business case. You need to have a better end result only like that, you will be able to succeed on sustainability. So that was kind of the philosophy from the beginning. And you know, 12 years later, we're here. We've raised around 250 million euros in different rounds. We we have, you know, very strong revenues, very strong valuation. I think you know, Formula is a it's a success story with lots of up and downs in the beginning. But but yeah, but here we are. 
I absolutely agree. Eh? At the end of the day, it's, uh, this is a business. It's not an NGO, so you need to make profit. And I always say that it's very important that this kind of companies uh, make profit because it's the way to prove no, that you can do things in a different way, but you can be as profitable as the other guys. No? And I think that's, that's going to open windows to many more projects and give financial to many other projects. No? So I absolutely agree. Uh, regarding technology, which I think you are very linked to technology, yeah. no? Uh, and, in, and sustainability, no? because I think uh, in both cases it's, it's very linked. Uh, where are you now? Where are you going? Can, can you tell us, because I remember you here once saying the evolution of the electrical car from the beginning where you had to change the car yeah, twice, change. where you're now and, and what is the future? So the role of technology, I think, is of course the key to solve the climate uh, challenge. And without technology, it will not be solved for sure. To give you the example of what we do in a small scale, in Formula E, we are on, the, on year nine, of, on season nine of racing. On season one, we had races of 45 minutes with two cars. The battery was not enough to do the whole race. So the driver had to jump from one car to another midway. And the lap time in Beijing, that was the first race that we did, was around one minute 40 with two cars. Today, we do the whole race of 45 minutes with one car, and the lap time, the simulations, because we're not racing in Beijing this season, the simulations are that we would be 35 seconds faster per lap. So from 114 to 105. So incredible improvement in speed, in performance, and also in distance. In distance. So that's, that's one little example. And, Javier Company is developing technologies on the textile industry and the clothing industry, which is really important because, of course, it's, a, it's a, a, an industry with a big impact. We are developing technologies for uh, clean mobility. But for me, there are two technologies without which we will not succeed on tackling the climate challenge, which are direct carbon capture and nuclear fusion. We do need those two to tackle climate change. We also need to change the mindset. We're not going to sort climate change in one day. This is the transition, and the transition needs to be realistic, going back to what we were saying before. Uh, we, we cannot live on fantasy world like many people do. I will comment maybe on the last part of the talk, but, but uh, we need to do things on the real world. Bueno, if you're gonna, uh, yeah, no, and I was gonna <laughs> I ask you. <laughs> I ask you. If uh, if you ask me, technology is also very related, no, to to what we did, no. When we started, I mean, a lot of people were saying you wouldn't be able to do a yarn with this waist. You won't be able to do what you're looking for. Um, I mean, the kind of uh, fabrics we were doing was completely different to the ones we we're making now, no. I remember, even with uh, with cotton, no. When we started, we were only able to to do 10% recycled cotton. No? Now, now we are able to do t-shirts of 100% recycled cotton where you can able to recycle them for three times. The fourth time, the t-shirt won't look good, so, but it's three times the lifespan of that t-shirt. No? And that's all about technology. That's been uh, investing and investing and investing. No? Because I think a lot of people don't know, but um, what well, Alejandro was saying it right now. No? We, we have to change many things, at least in the fashion industry. Of course, we have to change the way we consume because we have a problem with the business model in itself. So this is about buying, throwing, buying, throwing, and you trend every Thursday, discount, promotion, Black Friday, doesn't work. But we need to change also the, the way we do things. No? I was, I remember a few months ago, no, reading this article, which was uh, very sad. No? It was probably the biggest cotton company in the world burning 4,000 acres of forest in Ethiopia to plant cotton. So we're burning the forest to plant cotton to make t-shirts of five euros, which are going to finish in landfill in less than two years. No? And each t-shirt uses 1,500 liters of water. No? Well, I think there's not going to be enough water, there's not going to be enough landfills, and there's not going to be enough forests. No? We keep on this way. So I think thanks to technology, we're able to reuse all that waste again and be able to make the same quality t-shirts, same kind of garments, outerwear, jackets, sneakers, everything. No? So for us, it's more and more clear, at least at Equal, that what you do is not enough anymore. I mean, anybody can make probably a car or anybody can make a T-shirt, no? But the footprint of that car and of that T-shirt is more and more important, no? And that has a lot to do with technology. Yeah. yeah. And I think the last point we had on, the, on our uh, uh, See, that, that I want to ask you, no? Because... The burner shoe, yeah. 
Well, it's entrepreneurship, it's 230 net zero emissions, it's what's going on. I also want to ask you about what happened in Berlin yeah. <laughs> a few weeks ago. Yeah. So, no, I think that's interesting. Uh, and it's an anecdote, but it shows how there is, there, there is out there a um, strategy that threatens entrepreneurship. A few weeks ago, we had a Formula E race in Berlin. And a bunch of, they call themselves climate activists, jumped the fences and glued themselves to the, to the, to the, to the ground, to the, to the track, in front of the race cars, in order to try to stop the race. We were prepared because the police had alerted us that there was this group of activists and we had, I had 80 security people ready, they jumped, they took the people and they threw it out, but before the glue sticks, because if the glue sticks, then you have to call a doctor and there is a whole procedure to treat these kind of people. And it's kind of a paradox that these people went to do this to a uh, electric race, where we are promoting electric mobility. But what these people say is that they don't care if it's electric. What they don't want is the system, capitalism. They want to go against capitalism. And this is not an anecdote. You are seeing people throwing paint on incredible uh, art pieces. Some, some, some people, I will not go into the uh, insult, but they threw painting on a Van Gogh recently. Some people threw um, some kind of oil uh, material on the Fontana de Trevi in Rome the other day. And they do this, with the justi the, 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 they justify themselves by saying it's to save the planet. It's not to save the planet. The pe those people don't know, don't, they have no culture, they haven't read any books, they don't know Adam Smith, they don't know, David, they don't know Karl Marx, they, don't, they haven't you know, read the philosophy behind what they're doing. But the people behind them are trying to say that with capitalism, we cannot sort out the climate problem. And that's a big lie, but it's a very dangerous lie. Because it's only with the system we have, with capitalism, that can host entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs like Javier, like others, like entrepreneurs that will crack the problem of carbon capture, entrepreneurs that will crack the, the problem of uh, nuclear fusion, etc. That we will be able to solve, to solve the, climate challenge, uh, the climate challenge. It's very important to know this and to know that these people are wrong and to know that we have to ignore these people and to keep going. Now, it, it's really annoying for me the, the word greenwashing and how people use this word greenwashing. I'm sure they have told you you are greenwashing, they told me I'm greenwashing. The, greenwashing doesn't exist. Greenwashing is another tool of this, I call, eco-communist ideology to try I, to stop... I, I, I disagree. To try to stop progress. You disagree? Imagine an oil company plants a tree. It, it's planting a tree. Is it bad that it plants a tree? No, because it does it to, to look good, then it's better it doesn't plant the tree. No, it's better it plants the tree. You know what I mean? Any action that goes in the right direction, for me, is necessary. That's why, you know, I'm a big enemy of this expression, uh, greenwashing. But happy to debate. We have two minutes, 43 seconds. Okay. I, I um, no, I understand what you say, uh, I agree. but I do believe there's greenwashing. So at the end of the day, it's not the same thing, okay, I keep on doing things in that direction, then I plant three trees, and then I'm okay, no. I think you have to, as you said before, you have to work under the system, because outside the system is very complicated, to try to change things, no? And, and that's very important. I think you need to be able to change, no? I mean, net, the commitment of net zero emissions by 2030, no? We are a big corp company. So we have the, commission, the, 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 the mission to be net zero emissions. Got out. It's much easier if you compensate. So I keep on doing the things the same way I've been doing till now, and then it gets to 2030, I compensate, and everything, no. I think you have to change the way you work so that you don't compensate. And that means changing all the supply chain, changing many things you're doing, doing things in a different way, etc. No? So I think I understand what you mean, but I think it's not enough to keep on doing things that way and then plant five trees. I have another solution for what you're saying. A price for carbon. Oh. Then you get the market do what you just said. Exactly. And you don't leave to arbitrary judges who just, uh, you know, allow themselves or just uh, decide to be arbitrary judges to say who is doing right and who is doing wrong. You put a price to carbon. If you want to keep doing things you were doing it, you pay for it. That will give you the motivation to change. 
and the money that the governments uh, get from the carbon price, they use it to reduce taxes in general. I mean, here I'm getting that, very... that also works better for big companies than for small companies. So some big companies would be, no, they say, okay, I have the money, I can pay, but the small companies don't have the money to pay, so they're not able to do that. So you so, will do things on a dirty way. No, so I think I think that 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 is a solution, but it has to be very tough on the guys who have the resources to pay and keep on doing the things in the wrong way. Watch a two entrepreneurs spend for 30 years now debating here in front of you, but it's, it's like if you were debating you and I on our living room. Exactly. Well, this is a long conversation, and I think I'm sure a lot of people here would have different uh, opinions, no? Because this is a this is a big debate by himself, no? We have 20 seconds for a question. Is there any? Are there any questions? But I don't see anything. So. Well, it's 15 seconds, so you can close, Javier. No, thank you very much. I think it's a pleasure, Alejandro, to be here with you. And, uh, and I wish you the best of luck with... Uh, just one, one last question. Do you think Formula E will be able to go as fast as Formula One, but for the same period of, of, of laps? So that's right the, now? That's the question. Formula E could go as fast as Formula One today. Could go faster than Formula One today, but probably for around 20 minutes. I think in five years will be 40 minutes. I think in 10 years will be the same amount of time and faster on electric cars. And there's going to be also nitrogen cars or hydrogen is going to be? We're working on hydrogen cars, which is another very interesting area. And we're working on electric power boats. So okay. bringing electric racing all across the board. OK. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.